We hope it will help in creating investment and employment opportunities in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our chief guest today, the Honorable Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan, for his keynote address. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. President of World Bank, Mr. David Malpass, your delegation, Richard from the British High Commission, uh, Chief Minister Sin, ministers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, commiserate with the families uh, who have uh, families of the victims of uh, the Rahim Yar Khan train tragedy. It's uh, trying to imagine what they will be, must be going through right now. Uh, we just pray for them. May the Almighty Allah give them strength to bear this loss. Uh, this is a day to celebrate. Uh, it's, um, the celebration has been, um, for us, has been spoiled a bit by this uh, tragedy today. But I've, I especially want to congratulate um, all those who have taken part in this, uh, making this, this big achievement, climbing 28 places in the ease of doing business. I want to thank uh, the, congratulate and thank uh, all those who were involved in the BOI, the hard work they put in. And I hear Farina has been the real star who has really put in a lot of work. We congratulate the Sindh government for all the work they put in. Punjab, uh, but I especially wanted to thank Elango for all the help you provided us. Uh, David, let me just give you a brief history of Pakistan because I am Pakistan and I are almost the same age. So I, so we started off really well. Pakistan in the 60s was considered one of the fastest growing countries in, in, in Asia. And a lot of countries came and tried to study Pakistan's model. What was the secret of our success? And the secret was that we had one of the best governance systems. Our bureaucracy was considered the best in Asia. Uh, and we had the government in the 60s, they decided that Pakistan needed to industrialize. So all incentives were given to industries. Hence, Pakistan rose very quickly. We had this one thing which we had, and when you have rapid development, is income inequality. In inequality of income. So we had some very rich people and majority people in the beginning did not really taste the fruits of uh, that development. Unfortunately, rather than addressing this issue of income inequality, uh, we, we started a, a program of socialism in, in the 80s, in the 70s, where this nationalization took place. And unfortunately, we lost our way. Uh, the problem was that we developed this, and I, because I remember the political, uh, uh, the slogans of the time, somehow we developed this idea that making money was a sin, that 
that people making too many profits were some, somehow doing something illegal. And that mindset is what really where Pakistan suffered. And actually that mindset persisted even to this day. Amongst the bureaucracy, amongst some political figures, the idea that people should not be making too much money, the socialist mindset. So what we want right now, the, the gains we have made, these 28 points we've gone up, it's the beginning. What we must start off with is a different mindset, that making money is not a sin, as long as you pay your taxes. Now that's the other problem, we don't pay our taxes. Maybe that's why people sort of uh, resent people making money. But this new mindset in Pakistan is extremely important if we have to create wealth. Wealth creation is how we will get out of our current situation. We, we have uh, big deficits. Uh, I congratulate our economic team that we have narrowed the current account deficit. But still, we have big fiscal deficits. We still have to manage our current account deficit. But the way we, the future is if we create wealth. If we create wealth, which is, uh, David, what you were talking about, once you create wealth, you create more, you, you collect more taxes, and then you spend that money on your human beings. That's how uh, we saw China develop in the last 30 years. So this is the model for Pakistan. We want industrialization. We want wealth creation. And we want to lift people out of poverty. So a uh, lot of things, David, which you said, you know, is, is what we are trying to do right now. Uh, but the most ambitious program we have today uh, is pov our poverty alleviation program, ESAS. We have, n Pakistan has never spent so much money in our entire history on poverty alleviation as we are doing this time, despite having a very narrow fiscal, fiscal space. And so, as uh, our Commerce Minister said, that the challenge is that we've reached the stage now, tomorrow morning, we start to make inroads, the challenges we face. There are certain short-term challenges, there are medium and long-term challenges. Uh, in my opinion, the, the, one of the biggest challenges we face is that we have a young population and we have to give them skills. Uh, we have to revamp the education system. The education system must enable, equip a younger generation to go into the 21st century. We have uh, technologies developing at a mind-boggling rate. New technologies coming in, in inf information technology artificial intelligence. This is where we have a great chance that if we can equip a younger generation with the modern tools, then Pakistan, they become the asset of Pakistan. If we do not equip them, we do not pay attention on our education, they become a liability. So that's the number one challenge. Second is contract enforcement. We cannot invite invest, in, investment unless and until the investors have trust in a justice system. So that is another big challenge and we hope to be working with the, uh, the current Chief Justice who is one of the best jurists. We are very fortunate to have uh, uh, the current Chief Justice who, is, uh, who, who we consider as one of the best minds in, in the justice system. So we are, he's already working on the criminal justice system which again, you cannot, a country, unless it has rule of law, it cannot afford to, uh, it cannot invite investment. Uh, but the other thing is, how do we get contracts enforced? Uh, we have already suffered uh, major, uh, uh, Pakistan has been award, uh, major damages have been awarded against Pakistan. Rekodek, and then Karke, and it's all because uh, a justice system uh, just did not enforce contracts properly. Uh, 
But the, the other point, David, which we're talking about, we have to get our female population involved in, in nation building. So my government, and I'm proud to say that we have in the ASAS program, especially we are especially paying attention to uh, getting our women into the workforce. How, we, how can we um, value add to our women? How can we give them, equip them with modern education? That's the third challenge we face. Uh, but I am proud to say today that we have a team. We finally have a team which knows where we are headed. We've got a roadmap. We know where we are headed. And, um, and I, again, I, I must uh, thank Elango because whenever we have any problems, Elango is there to help us. When, <laughs> whenever we have the roadmaps, we will come. David, I, finally, I want to, again, thank you for coming here, all your delegation, to celebrate this, uh, this uh, uh, great achievement with us. Uh, and we hope to be in touch. We know we are already involved in a lot of other pro projects with the World Bank. We know that we are involving the World Bank in developing the infrastructure of Karachi, which is important because Karachi is our financial capital. And uh, we need the sort of financing from World Bank to give Karachi water, uh, the sewerage system, uh, uh, the transport system. So I want to really thank you because I know you've been very supportive to us. Thank you very much. Mr. Azam Imran Khan, Sarmayakari Board ke zire ehtamam karobar me آسانیاں پیدا کرنے کے حوالے سے تقریب کا انعقاد کیا گیا تھا جس سے وزیراعظم عمران خان خطاب کر رہے تھے ان کا یہ کہنا تھا کہ ساٹھ کی دہائی میں پاکستان تیزی سے ترقی کرنے والا ملک تھا لیکن اس کے بعد کچھ پالیسیز ایسی رہی جس کی وجہ سے